thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. We thank you for starting us on our way, oh God. We ask that you have your way in this service, oh God. We bind everything that is not you in the name of Jesus, oh God. We speak peace to the house, oh God. We speak deliverance to the house, oh God. We magnify your name, oh God. We worship you, oh God. We lift you up, oh God. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. You are worthy of the honor and glory. Let's give him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us, oh God. We thank you for everything that you're going to do for us, oh God. We realize, oh God, that when praises go up, blessings come down, oh God. We know that we can just speak a word and we can speak life into our situations, Lord. We can speak life into ourselves, oh God. We just ask, oh God, that you be in everything that is said and done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And our scripture reading. for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us then they swallowed us up and up quick for their wrath and kindled unto okay, sorry then the waters have overwhelmed us the stream had gone over the soul then proud waters had gone over our soul bless the Lord who have not given us as prey of their teeth our soul escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers, in snare broken, a war escaped. Our hope in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. Amen. Well, we're going to do some praise and worship this morning, but it's just a little bit quiet in here, so I don't know what it is, but it's too quiet. God is good? And all the time? Now, come on. God's been way too good to us this week. God is good and all the time. Amen. The first song that we're going to sing just simply says, Hail Jesus, you're my king. And it's one of our bishop's favorite songs, so we're going to do that this morning.
your mercy endures forever. Amen. Can we put our hands together.
about you, but I'm just grateful for that today, amen? So in honor of the 45th year, we're going to do some old school, some old school songs. You got to bear with me, though, because some of them were before I was born. So <laughs> that's why I need some help. But we're going to start with I'm a soldier.
Lord know how much you love him. We love you today, God. We worship you, Lord. You alone are worthy of all our praise. And we thank you. You may be seated.
but I'm standing here as a living witness that there are times in my life that as a songwriter said, when I look back over my life, I wish I was in the right place this morning. And I think things over. I can truly say that I've been blessed. Anybody been blessed in here? Anybody been blessed in here? God bless you. I, that's where I feel, right there. Thank you, praise and worship. I appreciate it. But I feel right here that somebody needs to call on his name. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. But there's something about the name of Jesus. The Bible says that every knee will bow. You stubborn person, you hard-headed person. Every knee will bow. You disobedient person. You backslider. Every knee <laughs> will bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We are celebrating today. My father has been in the ministry as, as pastoring my whole life. So it's not 45. Y'all ain't pushing me. It's 44. This is 44 years that Bishop and Mother Riley have been in leadership. And I think that deserves an amazing round of applause. And, and we have some wonderful things planned to honor them for their many years of service. When church is over, you see we have the fellowship hall set up. We want you all to come and stay and dine with us. We have a little program during the dinner. And then at 4 o'clock, we have a special church from a guest church from Trinity in Detroit, Trinity Church of Holiness. They've been coming over for almost 20 years. Well, no, more than 20 years because we wasn't married. So more than 20 years that they've been coming over this weekend and celebrating with him. So they're coming at four o'clock and we're asking you to come back and fellowship with us again. Put your dancing shoes on 
Put your running shoes on, because we're going to dance and we're going to run. Amen? But is there anybody in here that made up your mind that everything you've been through this week, all the mess you went through on your job, in your house, all the drama you had to deal with all week, is there anybody that said to yourself this morning, when I get to church, I'm going to give God praise because the devil in hell can't steal my joy. Have I got anybody that feels like that? You mean to tell me that some of y'all been through something this week? Well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to give you one minute. Now, this isn't for the music to start playing, shouting, and, and all that stuff. No. I'm going to give you one minute to just get up and tell God thank you in your own way, and then we're going to move on. Only if you've been through and you know God has brought you out, why don't you get up and give God praise right now?
before. If you really did, then look at somebody tell them God just turned it around. Look at somebody tell them God just turned my situation around. And look at somebody else tell them it's going to be all right. you to know just by coming today, God says it's going to be all right. <laughs> Sister Kim, it's going to be all right. Sister Elizabeth, it's going to be all right. said it's going to be all right. I got I to gotta move on. I'm telling you, I feel something in my spirit. Woo. Natasha, the Lord says it is all right. Come on, testify to somebody. Tell them it is all right. preliminary speaker is our own junior trustee. Let's say amen for Brother Terrence. Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, first giving God uh, honor who's had in my life to Pastor Paul, First Lady, as well as to Bishop and to Mother Riley. Um, today, I just want to talk about having standards and what it means to be holy. Um, Throughout the Bible, we are told over and over again about having godly standards and how we should live our lives as Christians. But in order for us to really live by these standards, we first must understand the meaning of the, of the word standard. So by definition, the word standard simply means to have a level of quality or achievement or acquirement that is acceptable and desirable. So for example, a football player, in order to go into the NFL, he must have a certain weight limit in order to enter the NFL or a doctor must go through many levels of education in order to get a doctoral titleship. But as children of God, we are held to more higher specific standards that we are to live by. As saved people, we live by the standards that the Bible calls holiness. Holiness is a lifestyle that entails the way we dress, walk, talk, and the way we behave. But it seems like nowadays some of us have let our standards sort of slip away from us, and we are allowing certain people and certain ideas into our souls that shouldn't be there. Uh, just for example, we hang around with certain crowds that may cuss and swear every other word. We might be in an atmosphere where smoking and drinking are taking place, and we're, we're tolerating it. As children of God, we shouldn't be tolerating things like that. Um, or we're even in the midst of people who are telling nothing but dirty jokes and gossiping and lying. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that we as children of God should not be tolerating or allowing these sorts of things in our spirit. We are putting ourselves in a situation where we don't need to be, just so we can temporarily satisfy <coughs> our friends and our loved ones. We aren't standing up for what we believe in. So my question today is, are you afraid of your standards? Why do, we, why do we shy away from what we believe in and allow these certain unclean things to come into our areas? Again, I ask, are we afraid of letting others know what we stand for and letting the world know that we are different? So there's a couple scriptures I want to help you guys out with. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2 and 17 says, Come out from among them and be ye separate. As Christians, we are to be separate from the world 
and we are to separate ourselves from going to certain places like the casino, nightclubs, bars, or even the parties. We should be able to remove ourselves from the idea of going to these places. Uh, for example, I've often heard people say, oh, I'm just going to the club for my best friend's birthday party. I'm not even going to have a drink. Or we allow ourselves to justify us going out by saying, oh, it's only for one night. What could it possibly hurt? We can repent later. By doing this, we are just making excuses for ourselves just to satisfy the desires of our friends and our families. By giving to the excuses and justifications, we aren't giving the world a reason to become saved. Um, make no mistakes that non-believers are watching our every move by if you step by your standards. By letting our guards down and loosening our standards, are we really setting the right example that God wants us to be? Are we truly followers of Christ or are we followers of our friends instead of being leaders and showing them the way? How are we supposed to be the light if we're always surrounded and mingling with darkness? Our priority shouldn't be to, te to satisfy the temporary needs. Our number one priority should be to remove ourselves from unclean things so that we can have a stronger, closer walk with God. And by doing this, he will have a better relationship with us. Stop allowing people to look down or talk about your beliefs and stop letting them persuade you that your standards are too high. Your standards is what separates you from the world and your standards are what makes you a child of God. We must stand for something or you'll fall for anything. And the last scripture would be from 1 Peter 2 and 9. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. As children of God, not only should our standards be different from those of the world, but they should be noticeable and admirable. Non-believers should want to look to us as role models. If we're living by the same standards of the world, how does that make us any different? So in other words, why do we call ourselves Christians if we're, not following, the way, if we're following the ways of sin and man instead of Christ? The word Christian literally means to be Christ-like. So let me break it down for you. For, so for instance, for ladies, if you're showing up to work or walking around the city and you're wearing a high skirt that you want all the guys to see, is that really what women are supposed to be doing in Christ? For guys, um, for the men of, of the church, um, if you're with your friends and you're cussing up a storm left, right, and center, but you're professing to be saved, is that really how Christian men talk? Your conversation should be clean. If we're talking down to people because they wronged us in the past or we don't like the way they looked at us, we check your standards. We should be peaceful like Christ was. And lastly, if we're around people who are smoking and drinking for the entertainment and we happen to take part of it, is that keeping our temple clean? Everything should be different than the world. Stop trying to please everyone because after all, why fit in when you were born to stand out? Standards of holiness involves 100% commitment to our daily walk with God by the way we talk, walk, think, communicate, and the way we dress. Whatever we do, it should be done to the approval of God and not of ourselves. Having standards is a way to have a stronger relationship with the Lord. Stop being afraid to let others know what you stand for. Stop being afraid of what others think of you and stand up for what you believe in. Don't just show up, stand out. Be the difference in this world to make others want to follow the ways you do towards Christ. Just remember, he who is in you is greater and the, he who is in you is greater than the one in the world. So the next time a situation comes to deter you away from your standards, tell the situation, I don't have to tolerate this. I'm dead to that. When that man or female happens to invite you over for desires of their own, you should say, I'm dead to that. I'm, I won't tolerate that. When they invite you to the club, I'm dead to that. We don't have to tolerate any unclean things because we are chosen people of God. Don't give in to these temptations. Let us live a clean and holy life that is acceptable in the eyes of our Creator. Now, I know some of y'all might not have said too many amens because holiness is right. He said, why are you trying to fit in when we are born to stand out? Yeah, trustee, I'm taking that one. I'm throwing that one in a sermon somewhere. This young man said some powerful things. And I want you to know I am not ashamed to tell you that Harrison Memorial Church of God in Christ, we are wholly believing. Now, does that mean everybody in here lives what they're supposed to? I ain't your judge. My name ain't God, but you better live right, because the God I serve, look at somebody tell him, God don't like ugly. 
All right, man, that was awesome. Awesome, trustee, appreciate that. It's time for offering. While the offering is going on, after the choir has given their offering, the choir is to go out and get their robes on and come into the stands. After you've given your offering, the choir is to get their robes on and come into the stands. Shall we stand? This is offering time. Our offering is our sacrifice. Our tithing is our obligation. Bring your tithes and offering to the Lord. Everybody's standing. Everybody, everybody, everybody. After the offering, the choir is going to sing, and then we're going right to the word of God. We're not here to hold you long. We came to give the Lord praise and to hear a word. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the offering we're about to receive. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, turn your face to the middle aisle. Follow the direction of the ushers. Bring the offering today. Sister Doretta, we welcome you. Just stand and let us see who you are. This is Mother Geary's daughter. Yep. She is a cross between Brian and Lila. Amen. So we are so glad that she's with us. Brother Brian is resting. His daughter got married yesterday. So he's resting because he's got to keep working to pay for yesterday. So I texted him and said, you go ahead and rest because you're going to have to work a little harder now. 
but we thank God for her coming in out of town. Just all of you, it's just good. I don't mean to call names, but I know they come from fire. All right, choir, sing us A and B, and then we're going to return to the book of St. Luke, the 10th chapter, and then flip over to 2 Timothy, chapter 1. We give you glory. 
getting ready to come back in after the robes. Y'all might not realize it, but these spotlights are hot. Yes, they are. When that choir is up there moving back and forth in them robes, y'all ought to give them more praise because it's hot. Just before I go into the word, I want to acknowledge we had some birthdays. And man, October is just so busy. Y'all was born in October, man. That's just a busy month. <laughs> so Friday was our Deacon Bayless birthday. <laughs> he can be 21 if he wants to. 22, he said, all right. And also on Friday, we celebrated our first lady's birthday, who's actually tomorrow, but Sister Riley's birthday, Sister Sherry. Amen, who else? That's it for, for October? All right, at the end, when's your birthday, Mother? The 23rd, Mother Sylvia's birthday. Mother, you can be 22 as well, if, if you want to. Latavian had a birthday yesterday. So there's so many. So at the end of the service, we will sing our version of happy birthday to you and uh, bless your year. All right, looks like the choir is back in. Let's go to the word of God. I'm trying not to be before you long. I just want to share this word into your spirit. Luke 10, 19, and then 2 Timothy 1. Luke 10, 19, there is no children's church today. Stay inside. The hall is too beautiful for the children today. That's all I'm saying. Luke 10, 19, Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you the authority or power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And somebody saying, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I, I just want to talk on the word power. I just want to talk on the word power because it's a word that a lot of us know what it means but don't realize how much of it we actually have. Did you know that there are situations that will arise in your life which will show you just how much power you really have? I was told as a little boy that there was a mother who was uh, whose son was playing in the driveway and, and it looked like the car had released itself and was going to back up. And it said that the mother ran and held the car because she was trying to protect her son. And she found out at that moment right there she actually had more power than she ever thought she had. And I want you to know this morning that when we can realize how much power, and not just power, but where our power comes from, then we will realize that there is nothing in this world that should be able to shake your stand in God. Have I got a witness here? I hear so much, Deacon, I do, and I'm not going to preach a, 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 a a fussing message or anything. I hear so much of people who have let their guard down. I hear so much of people who have been tricked by the enemy. I hear so much of people who are walking in holiness and then gave up for a moment. I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that the Bible lets us know now unto him who is able to keep you from. Now, I'm not going to stand here and say you will never fall. But I'm going to tell you, if you lean on Jesus, he's able to keep you from 
That's why the Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all thine might and lean not to thine own understanding. Stop trying to figure out things your own self. If you was that smart, you wouldn't need Jesus. But you ain't that smart. How you know? Because you in the situation you in right now. Oh, they quiet on me today, Bishop. You're in the situation you're in right now because you thought you was bad enough, big enough, and smart enough to handle it. But how many of you know that you can't mess with God? If, if, if I could, I, I'd say if we were at nighttime, because it won't work in a day, I would tell you to turn the lights off and, and we'd all be in here sitting in darkness. And what I want you to understand about power, this is how power works. If we were in here and everybody would have turned the lights off and we were to sit in darkness, we wouldn't see each other, none of us would move out of the fear of where we are going. But just because you're in darkness or in a dark spot or in a dark moment doesn't mean you don't have access to the power. Oh, y'all, you're staying with me here. See, if, if, if the room is dark, it's because nobody turned on the power. And a lot of us are, are, are living our lives in darkness. A lot of us are living our lives in dark situations. A lot of us have dark problems. A lot of us have dark areas. And I want you to know that that doesn't mean you're wrong. It simply means you haven't stopped to take time and turn on the power. Timothy said, stir up your gift. My brothers and sisters, if you stay in the dark too long, if, if Steve Harvey was here, he'd tell you if you stay in the dark too long, you'll start tripping. You'll trip over everything. You'll trip over the pews. You'll trip over the person next to you. You'll trip over your own two feet. Because in the dark, you can't see where you're going. And I'm here to tell you that the reason some of us are tripping in our relationships, the reason we're tripping with our children or tripping with our neighbors or tripping with our jobs is because we have been returned to the source. The source of all power whose name is Jesus. If you don't turn on the source of your power and remain in your darkness, my brothers and sisters, you will continually trip. You've got to know who the source is. I remember one time when, and I hope I'm not dishonoring some of y'all, but it's hot. I remember one time when I was getting ready to go to church we was going to Saginaw and and we chartered this big bus and when we chartered the bus and everybody got on I sat next to my mama and my mama said to me said did you know that there was a tear in your suit I said no I didn't know and I, I felt back there and I said oh good lord have mercy there's a tear in my suit and I was to be the main speaker of that night. So I kindly asked the bus driver, would you mind if we go and take a pit stop? He said, where are you going? We got to go to my house so I can change. And when I got back home, I took that same suit and I had to take it to a place that not only cleans, but does alterations. Have you ever ripped or torn something and you had to find a cleaners that not only cleans, but does alterations. Because I want you to know if it's just a cleaner that cleans, yes, you'll take it in dirty, and when you pick it up, it will be clean. But if it's a cleaners that has cleaning and alteration, not only will it be clean, but the tear will have been sewn. The button will have been put back on. The fix would have been fixed. The broken would have been fixed. And I want you to know that this source of power is like a cleaner's with alterations. Not only does God clean you up from the inside out, but God can mend the brokenhearted. God can fix your broken relationships. God can fix your broken past. God is a God that does alterations. I wonder if I got a witness in here. He'll fix your broken heart. 
He'll fix your broken relationships. He'll fix your broken mind. He'll heal the wound. I told somebody earlier, there's no hurt like church hurt. But I'm so glad I serve a God that can heal the wounded hearts. The source of your power has power to heal and to deliver. When you know what kind of power we have, a lot of us don't realize not only what we have, Deacon, but who we have. They tell me that President Jimmy Carter was known for when he would travel from city to city, he wouldn't stay in the big expensive hotels. But Jimmy Carter would send message to the city he was coming to and he'd let them know, I'm coming to your city. And what they would do is they would randomly pick a family. And they would say, the president is coming to stay at your house. Can you imagine how the family must have felt knowing that the president of the United States is coming to stay at my house? I'm, I'm sure the mama went crazy and made sure there was no dust in the smallest corner of the house. Because the president is staying at my house. Can't you imagine that when the president comes, before he gets there, they send his secret service. And the job of the secret service is to make sure that everything is clean for the president's arrival. So when the president comes, one thing that the president does is the president makes you feel protected. Because with the president comes secret service. And with the secret service, it's greater than any alarm you have in your house. And I want you to know today, my brothers and sisters, as safe and protected, as honored, and as glad as they were to have the president, the most powerful man in the United States, to stay in their house. I came to let you know if you have God in your house, that you've got more power than anybody who's hosting the president. As a matter of fact, not only do you have power of someone bigger than the president, but you've got someone who has so much power that he created the very universe. You've got someone that comes not by himself, but the Bible says that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are three that come as one. And when Jesus comes in to your life, he doesn't just come in and leave you without anything. But I want you to know that he brings his secret service with him. For David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'm here to wonder today, do you know how much power you really have? And the only way to know what kind of power you have is to know who is in your house. When we have someone in our house that has power, you can stand up stronger. When you've got someone in your house that has power, you stand up bolder. And I came to let you know that the man that's living in our house, his name is Jesus. We have someone in our house who was born in poverty, the lowly of lowly lists. Yet the wise men came and brought riches and laid them before him. We've got somebody in our house who was born helpless baby. Yet he spoke the spinning world into existence and sustains the mighty pillars of the existence by his word. We've got somebody in our house who was cradled in somebody else's cradle, sailed in somebody else's boat, rode on somebody else's animal, buried in somebody else's tomb, and yet to him belongs the riches untold that are full of glory. Do you know who you have in your house? We've got somebody in our house who as an infant was the frightened the kings of the world. 
As a boy, he confused the scholars of the world. As a man, he stilled the raging waters. And as a man, he spoke to the winds, and the winds would cease. Yes, we've got somebody in our house who can heal all manner of diseases and won't even charge you a penny. Do you know who's in your house? He is the one that Herod couldn't kill. Satan couldn't seduce. Sin couldn't stand. Sinners couldn't resist. Death couldn't destroy. Grave couldn't contain him. We've got somebody in a house. We got the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the keeper of creation, the creator of all, the architect of the universe, the Lord of history, the one who was, who is, and always will be. Somebody shout, He's in my house. My way maker, my heavy load bearer, he's in my house. My friend when I'm lonely, my doctor in a sick room, he's in my house. My joy unspeakable and full of glory, he's in my house. That one that they nailed on the cross pierced in the side put crown of thorns on his head on the cross he died but on the third day he went down into heaven took the keys from death stole from the grave and said all power is in my hands look at somebody tell him he's in my house and as for me and my house we will serve the Lord and since he is living in me I'm walking around with my chest sticking out I'm walking around with my head up high cause I've got power to walk on scorpions I've got power to tread on anything that the devil throws at me cause no weapon formed against me shall prosper cause I've got power look at somebody tell them power when you know what power you have it doesn't matter what your education level is it doesn't matter what your status is but it matters who Jesus is because <laughs> when you know you've got power <laughs> he said to the children <laughs> suffer the little children <laughs> to come on to me and there was a story as I get ready to close of a little girl six years old and it was time for youth night at church and they said one of you youth have got to open up with prayer and the young people said I don't want to pray I don't like to be up front but that little six year old girl said if you let me I will pray and when it came time for youth night, they said, we're calling on that little six-year-old girl. That little six-year-old girl got up and took the microphone and said, bow your heads. And she began to say, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, I, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, N, Z, Amen. Everybody got to looking like y'all looking at me now. The following week came and another young person whose purpose was to make fun of the little girl said, Pastor, can you let her pray again? Pastor said, little girl, would you like to pray? She said, sure, I will. Little six-year-old girl got up and said, bow your heads. And she said, A, B, C, D. E F G tear 
tears start rolling down her face. H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O-P. Her hand got to lifting. Q-R-S-T-U-V. Her head got to shaking. W-X-Y-N-Z. Amen. The little girl went back to her seat, shaking and crying. Church mother said, little girl, what's wrong with you? We asked you to pray, but you keep singing your ABCs. The little girl said, well, church mama, I don't know how to spell big words. And I don't know what big words to use in my prayer. But I figure if I give him the alphabet, he can put the words together for for me and I came to let somebody know you might not know how to pray you might not know what to pray but look at God and tell him A B C D E F G that boss is on your back A B C D E F G your wife don't act right A B C D your husband don't act right E F G your children don't act right H H not hell but H I J K L M N O P cuz God knows your heart God knows your mind God knows your situation God knows your problem. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows the pain that you have. And I'm here to tell you, he's got power. He's got power. 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 you know today that whatever you want whatever you need God's got it that's what that's what y'all taught me you said what you need God's got it he's got everything you need a husband God's got it you need a wife? God's got it. You need a job? God's got it. You need healing? God's got it. You need deliverance? Oh, Y'all are short on this one. You need more money? I'm going to drop this in and I'm going to finish. All you out there that's struggling with gambling still. All you out there that's struggling with what you playing the lottery and pulling the polls. God gave you charge over your money. Throughout the Bible, he says, you take 10% and give it to the storefront. Then he responds to it and says, and if you give, I will open up the windows of heaven and I will pour you. Wait, it's, it's, if you give, I will open up the windows of heaven and I will what? Pour you out a blessing. Every time you take your money and buy something that is chance, you have worshipped the God chance over God. They didn't like it, Bishop. Calm them right down. Some of us in here, we holding on to every penny we got. Last thing I'm going to do is take a chance. Put it in there and pull on it and hope. Because after I done pulled $150 and it ain't coming back. When the Bible says, if you give what you have, watch this. He says, if you give, I'll give it back. That's what, that's not what God said. But watch how God returns it. See, the lottery and gambling is a chance. You might win, you might not. And here's a little secret, Deacon. If you do win, by the time they take taxes from you, 
But watch what God does. God says, but if you give it to me and let me handle it, I'll give it back to you, press down. Oh, that's, this is good. He said, and then I'm going to shake it together. And he said, and when I give it to you, it's going to be running off. Somebody say overflow. I, I know a man. How'd I get on that? I know a man that won the lottery. Who he won some money. I was younger. And I remember that he bought this great big old house and car because he won a lot of money. I'm here to tell you that today, years later, that same man is bankrupt because money don't last always. I know I got a witness there. Money don't last what? Some of y'all say money don't last. And the Bible says that I made you stewards over your money. Now, why would he say that, Terrence? Because the love of money is the root of that's why we tell you in church, those of you that got a will, don't you tell your children how much money they're going to get when you die. You better not do it. You keep that relationship. Keep them guessing. Because the love of money. Sherry and I watch Forensic File all the time. So many of those stories are children who have killed their parents or a husband has killed a wife because they want to collect the... And when you play with chance, what you got was a chance to be in jail the rest of your life. And all that money you paid into your insurance is now... I had to help somebody there. And God's saying, when you stop playing them crazy things... Give me your money and watch if I don't turn it. He said, I'll give back to you 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 fold. Because I've got all power. Bow your heads, close your eyes. I'm done. I've got all power. Today, I wanted to share with somebody that you, if you have God in your life, you have more power than what the devil is trying to tell you you have. See, it's the devil's job to make you feel like you're worthless. It's the devil's job to make you feel like you're nothing. It's his job to always point out your failures and to always point out your, your shortcomings. That's his job. And guess what? He's doing a good job. Anytime you feel bad about yourself, Anytime you say, you know, I'm not where I thought I would be. I've said that several times, man. I'm not where I thought I'd be by this age. That's what I used to say. But then I stopped thinking about it and said, no, I might not be where I thought I'd be, but I am where God wants me to be. And that's better than what I thought. So I want to pray for somebody today who, who needs this power. Somebody who wants this power on the inside. That God knows what you're going through. He knows everything you're going through. I'm telling you, you are not bigger than God. God knows exactly what you are dealing with. But he's here today saying, I want to deal with it for you. Say, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, please don't look around. This is between you and God. I want you to act like nobody else is in the room but you and God. And God is saying to you, if you'll just let me in and let me take control of the situation, I'm going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. If that's you today and you want to just give it over to God, whatever it is, whatever the problem is, the situation is, I want you to raise your hand and say, I'm turning it over to Jesus. I see you. Just turn it over to him. Just lift your hands. I'm turning it over to him. I don't understand everything, but I do know one thing. If I turn it over to him, he's going to turn things around. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? I'm giving you a chance. I see you with your hands. Just raise and put them up. I want you to know right now, as you hear my voice, the devil's trying to talk to somebody. He's telling you, don't you do it. You're fine. You're set. Don't you let nobody know you're going through. Well, the devil is a liar. God wants to bless you. Everybody standing. Everyone, everyone, everyone standing.
Those of you that raise your hand, come on, let's pray together.